What up, Pokemon fans? Blake Trout here, and welcome to your Week 1 Battle Analysis of PCBL Season 8. After we've had our battle with Coach Oak and the Iki Town Incineroars, I'm now here to analyze, <laughs> get it, but analyze our certain battle and every little tiny facet of it. I'm trying to make this thing go as short as possible, but not too long. Probably going to be at best mm, 20 minutes max. So that's pretty much how that's going to go for each battle itself. So a minimum is probably going to be, I don't know, if I feel like I'm done and it feels right, it feels right. And uh, it's going to be pretty much every week after our certain battle. And it's going to come in along maybe a little bit before after the good old fashioned weekly analysis. But until then, we'll deal with that later when we got to. So basically, we have to play against Oak and his crazy team. And I'm not going to lie, we have a pretty darn bad matchup against him. His team pretty much consisted of Mega Quayle, Tornadus T, Tapu Koko, Rhianoclus, Silvalli, Nidoking, Pelipper, Kingdra, Escavalier, Ludicolo, Liopard, and Tauros. Now, what was scary about this is that, of course, it has Tapu Koko in it, but there's no Koko Lucha this time, so. None of that gimmicky stuff. <laughs> I'm just kidding, just kidding. But really, this is a tough opponent, and he's actually pretty darn competent. He's beaten me twice, especially within the last two battles of PCBL7, and sadly, I lost the final because of him. And he's now the lowest seeded player to win, and it could have been us, but I'm not salty. No, no, no. I'm not salty about that one bit. But yeah, so he really does have a kind of a different team. It really does thrive off of rain and uh that's really what i was trying to think of like how am i going to beat the rain and a pokemon like ludicolo kind of just runs through everything so i kind of built my team in such a way so i can kind of deal with all of his threats he has really good defensive options on top of that he's got some decent speed he has tauros and liopar for speed activation he's got switch swimmers like kingdra and ludicolo for speed and uh he's got some power too in the special and physical range so really well maybe not as physical but he still has coco glaily and Escavalier for physical options. And Kingdra can be physical or special. So really it's just extremely tough with him. So it's going to be kind of hard to grasp and understand what I want to get out of it. So I kind of thought that out of the six he would use the most likely of, it would be Pelipper, Nidoking, Coco, Kingdra, or Ludicolo. It's going to be one of the two. It won't be both. Rhianoclus, uh, Escavalier, and Mega Glaily. Probably one of the other two, but never both. Most likely going to be a Scavalier because that kind of gets in the way of a lot of things, and he'll definitely have coverage for Fire, and he might be more confident about that. So, I pretty much made my team for a certain specific purpose, and uh, that's really what I wanted to go for. So, we're going to start with it one Pokemon at a time. Pretty much that's all I really want to talk about with that. So, our first Pokemon is Porygon, you know, because. Coach Oak is not only a great coach, but he's handsome, a fun dude, a humble champion, interesting, and one hell of a guy. But hindsight, or back in serious form, Vaporeon itself was kind of a nice option to just deal with water type itself, and it'd be a nice way to deal with physical threats in some cases, because we do have a lot of bulk. My issue was is that he doesn't, if he was most likely to go special, Vaporeon can kind of tank in a way. So I gave it 180 plus defense. I was thinking about doing max, but I was thinking I don't really take special hits that well. And he does have a lot of mines that hit pretty hard. And I thought I could focus this around Nidoking, because with Nidoking, it can be special, but I've never really seen him do physical. But special is most likely one that I can't really take a hit, like Earth Power or Sludge Wave does almost about over half. So I thought if I ever 1v1 this and try to knock it out, it'd be better for me just to at least be able to take it. So I took a little bit out and... This gives me at least enough defense to take hits from this and also other physical threats such as the Scavalier and Tauros. And what I am most scared of with this against this team is basically a Scarf Tauros or a Scarf Nidoking, but I don't really see Scarf Nidoking being a likely thing, but if it is, it is. And he can get away with doing that one. But it wouldn't make sense if he wouldn't hit as hard. So back to what I was saying before. Gave a skull because it just makes the most sense and it just gives us like a nice chance to burn and add a little bit more damage. Uh, Wish, of course, was just pretty much for cleric usage. I didn't do heal bell and just did protect and haze. Protect was, you know, pretty typical for it. it I made this one my cleric basically. And I did haze because I was more afraid of what Rhianoclus could do. He could just set up and I have nothing to do to stop it. It was either using this or an unaware Clefable to stop it. But I thought, you know what, Haze is just a better option sometimes. 
and I just decided Haze, and it can just help and become handy to just shut down any form of momentum you could gain from that. Or from any other mod that could set up. All of them are pretty much capable of setting up, except a few. Probably four or five of them. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is for Vaporeon. So let's go and move on to the next one. See, Dust Noir was a really special case, because the reason that I drafted it was for its amazing bulk. That it could just take hits. And it really can hit a little hard if it wants to, it's only in the physical realm. But my issue was is that I don't really have a lot of things to hit it with, and I rather would have it be some kind of like jammer just to take hits and kind of disrupt a lot of momentum. So with Earthquake, it's mostly just to keep Coco and other physical threats at bay, or pretty much just all the, the ground-type weak mods. The only mods I can't touch is sort of everything else, you know? Pretty much the only one that I can't really beat 1v1, or can attempt to think to beat 1v1, could be a Scavalier, or Silvalli, if it was Ghost or Dark. It wouldn't be a good matchup, but I have my defenses up so high. I did 252, 24, 232 careful because with a really good amount of defense, I can take any special hit, especially from Nidoking. Nidoking's scary because I don't really have much of a defense against it, and if, you know, this thing dies out or Great Coach dies out, then I'm pretty much going to be set to take an out, a big fat one. But, yeah, I gave it Will-O-Wisp to stop all physical attackers and or add damage if I need to. Pain Split just to keep myself alive and healthy because I don't have any recovery. Nightshade is a nice consistent amount of damage where you just do 100 points of damage every time, which is either anyone ranging from 26 to maybe 40%, depending on who my opponent is and who the threat is supposed to be. It's a really nice way to do it so I don't have to worry about him setting up on a special defense just to keep wearing him down. But that's pretty much it. And that's kind of why I wanted to use Dust Noir, and it was a really good idea at the time. When I thought this, I thought, well, I really want to use this because it kind of is my only defense against Ludicolo for a moment. I wanted to at least take a hit so it can just do its pain split thing and possibly stall for time, at least for a minute or a second, anything that I would need. So that's kind of what my own plan was with using Dust Noir. So that's kind of what I really was hoping for. So let's move on to the next uh, Clefable was kind of hard because I really wanted this thing to work the way I wanted it to, you know? At first I thought, wait, let's do a soft world unaware set that has cosmic power. Now, the issue with this is, that doesn't work. And what sucks about this set is that I was thinking, oh god, it really can't use unaware. And unaware was a good ability to shut down Rionicles. I was scared, really scared of Rionicles and a Scavalier. And if they did use setup, they would just be kind of stopped and I could take a hit. I did weakness policy in case I faced his Scavalier. Therefore, I get the double boost and can one-shot him with Flamethrower and really put him in a tight spot. It really, the idea was to use, like, Cosmic Power so long for so much that I would take the hits and do it, but I had to configure it. I did Stealth Rock in order to force him to switch out, and he can just take residual damage because, again, he does mostly hyper-offensive. He doesn't really add a thought of using the player. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just that's how he's done it. He didn't do it last season. He didn't do it this season either. So... He didn't, so that's why I was kind of just trying to gun for something like that. Just to at least add some pressure for him to switch or stay in if he has to and make a tough decision. And that was really the whole plan. And Moonblast is just a nice stab move that can hit pretty hard. And Flamethrower is a nice coverage move for the Steel types. Or Grass, or whatever else. Mostly basically only two on top of that. But that's pretty much it, and that's all I was kind of really worried about. And it's really not that bad, in all honesty. So that's really just Pokemon number three. There wasn't really too much to deal with Clefable. I just had to put on, like, one thought or idea, and that was kind of what I was gunning for. Like, I did the defensive spread kind of split, because I didn't know if I wanted to be full defense or full special defense, and I just split it. I That's what I wanted to do. And I don't really regret it. I thought it seemed like a good idea at the time, so I could take some certain hit and just keep surviving. Because I thought, look, I already have a main defense and a main special defense. Let's do a main split defense. It's like how I want to do my whole defensive core, usually. I have at least either half or two that are just straight defense and special defense. But if there's three, one's physical defense, one special defense, the other is split. It can be one. It can be pretty much both, or it could be a little bit of the other side or a little bit of the other, depending on what I want to do with that. That's usually what I want to gun for. So that's pretty much Pokemon number three. Okay, so Pokemon number four was Humble Champion or Zorark. And honestly, this Pokemon was kind of like my, this is my mom with speed. This needs to do its job. And I was really 
flustered and just thinking really hard of if I should do modest or if I should do modest. I was thinking, should I do modest or should I do timid? I, I was just so hardly, un I was just so hard unsure about what I wanted to do. And what I was worried about was that I need to be fast enough just to outspeed everything. I was worried really hard about rain and my issue with rain was like, oh, if I, I don't outspeed a swift swim, max speed, timid, Ludicolo. So do something about that. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? Adding Stealth Rocks means that it would not take too much damage. I can just do a little bit less and just do enough later. And the 120 special attack is still pretty darn effective. And it did its job. So that's what I had to hope for. And that's why I switched it to Timid. And really, I gave it Flamethrower for coverage in case he brought a Scavalier along. Dark Pulse to hit Rionicles. And so Valley goes to Psychic or whatever else you could think to add. Uh, sludge Bomb itself for Coco, specifically for Coco. I wanted to make myself fast enough to knock it out in one shot. And then Hidden Power Electric for, again, it can also one-shot a Pelipper if it gets affected by rocks as well, and that works in my favor. So really that's all there is to it. It was meant to be my main attacking option for the special variant. I had nothing physical, and I thought that this just makes more sense, and Illusion could just work into my favor just to confuse and mess with them. And that's really what I needed the most in order to have it work my way. Okay, so this idea was extremely counterintuitive. Uh, Pokemon number 5 Heatran is kind of funny. I don't know why, but I basically did what I did, thinking that, look, he would never expect Heatran to show up. Let me just do this instead. And I gave it Sunny Day and didn't do Z Sunny Day because I felt like that would be a waste of a Z move. But I figured that if a max special attack, Dark Pulse at Dark EMZ can actually one-shot a max... Uh, what it would out, it would destroy a max special attack or a max or max defense Rihanna quest and that would actually work and can help me knock this thing out or at least do mostly 90 something percent damage if possible if he had a little bit of a special defense investment flamethrower just hits and it doesn't do anything stupid sunny day just adds more power and shuts down rain forcing him to make switches hidden power electric is meant to just take down a uh, pokemon like pelipper without him thinking about it thinking that he would have to force me to either switch or he could just use Rooster to fog his stuff out. That's pretty much what the point is, just to keep him off guard, because I automatically outspeed and no speed Pelipper, and that really just works in my favor. And Sunny Day can help shut down something if he does switch in for rain, or it's rain and I have an opportunity to go against Rihanna Cliffs, I can just set up. And that's really it, and then Flamethrower will be more powerful, rain will drop, and I would have much more defensive options. So yeah, that's really all Heatran was for. It was meant to disrupt weather somehow, and I was kind of desperate because I didn't really have hit powder on me this time to do anything about it. So in the end, it kind of worked in my favor. Kind of. I was saying that because we had a mock battle, or me and Troy had a mock battle, and it kind of did work, but it still was really situational. So yeah. Okay, so Pokemon number 6 is basically just Jolteon, uh, Specs Jolteon, giving it Thunder for in case I was stuck in rain and just get hit hard with some attack. It's stronger than Thunderbolt, especially, I think Thunderbolt only 90, 100, so Thunder just does uh, 110, 70, and it just has more power, and it doesn't miss in the rain. And uh, Volt Switch is a nice way to just add in some pivoting. Light screen in case I just either am planning for this thing to die or he's going to switch to something else that has really good attack that can hurt me. Shadow Ball for coverage because it hits uh, Pokemon like Rion Cliffs for some damage or anything else for damage and can still do a lot with specs. And specs hits hard. Uh, that makes basically 359 or in this case 319. That's off of uh, what? 100 and. 159 and a half so adding another 159 and a half or 160 that's three that's like four that's 479 right there that does a lot that's a lot of health a lot of damage that can be done there but that's pretty much just it with that and you know it all really works out in the end with that uh speed itself i know i speed tie coco but i outspeed a lot of things as well and the only thing that I expect to be scarfed is mostly either Tauros or Nidoking or... Hmm, what else? Hell, even Tornadus I might not be prepared for, but still. I don't know. If he brought it. And, uh... I wouldn't have to be Ludicolo no matter what I did. So, it is what it is. 
And really that's all I could do. I really needed this to actually survive Coco because if I didn't have it, Coco would just basically run my balls all day. <laughs> Why did they run my balls? What? Okay, now scratch that from the record. <laughs> it, it, would, it would basically just destroy me. You would have no reason for the think to switch or plan around it. So it would give me an easier time to deal with them. So let's uh, get on to the battle. And... All right, so here we go. We got the battle nice and set up here. And we can talk about it, I guess. So, you know, I, he completely threw me the heck off. I, I could not, not for the life of me, think that he would do this. I was like either a mix of relieved and scared because I'm like, oh, God, what the heck is he planning? This is not at all what I expected or planned around. So I didn't expect him to bring, I didn't expect him to kind of bring Tauros, but not bring Tauros at the same time. Like, that's an option. He would definitely have a chance to use in Sil Valley. That's a wild card right there. Uh, Coco, of course, I was thinking, is it physical or special? Is it Z-Move or nah? Needle King's Needle King. I mean, hey, it could be whatever I'm scared of. And uh, Rionicles is what I thought it was. Probably max defense, usual set. It always works. Um, and with Regenerator, maybe. Or Magic Guard. They're both broken abilities for this guy. It's crazy. And Torn T was a complete... Oh, I did not expect this at all type of mod. So, Alright, so let's get the battle started. I let out with uh, Laport, the Fable because I wanted to put out rocks at the time being. But I thought, oh, let's go into Heatran instead. He went for the straight light screen. That completely threw me off really bad. He goes straight into Nido King. And I'm like, alright, uh, he throws spikes. At this moment, I'm like, oh god, this is not looking good. He's completely doing not what I expect. And I'm not expecting him to go like, wow, did he seriously for real just use... Tata Spites, I don't have Heal Bell, I'm in trouble! And this is really a bad moment, I don't have a lot of mods that are just immune to the poison. So this is actually a pretty bad moment happening. I just wanted to do, let me just keep scalding. And by the grace of God, we got, boom, a scald, burn, right out there. So, eh, it's pretty much looking kind of bleak, he goes straight out into Rionicles. I go for scald again, of course. And I was thinking, just going for Skull, what the heck is he planning? What move is he going to go for? He goes for Reflect, so I'm thinking he's dual screens, and he probably has Psychic on top, right? That's what I expected, that he probably has that and maybe Recover. And if he doesn't, something else, maybe, but he wouldn't have Recovery, right? If he didn't have Recover, so. Again, it was really not the most least obvious thing. It made sense. So back to the battle again. Ty of Alcoco, it just really was being annoying. Uh, he goes into RK Zeus, hits Savali Ghost, surprisingly. And I thought, hmm, let me go for my Z move, because it's either this or nothing. But then he thought, oh, he'll live the fire typing. I go for Black Hole Eclipse and do about 62%. I'm like, well, this isn't good. I basically was kind of stuck for a minute and a half or two minutes trying to figure out should I just go into Clefable to do whatever, or is he going to switch to something else? So I go to Clefable. Uh, he goes into Tornado's T, and I thought, alright, let me set up my rocks, and hopefully we don't get screwed up here. So that's good, got my rocks nice and set up. He goes for Hidden Power, lives in, that's HP ground, he thought he can go right into Heatran. I went for Soft Boiled, he goes for Air Slash again, just so I can go for Moonblast. Ooh, look at that, we did a lot of damage. And he goes for U-Turn, I'm like, oh god, what is he going into? He goes right into Coco, and I'm like, oh god, not Ty of Coco. This isn't good. I go for soft oil, he goes for hidden power ground, and he, he really played me hard on this one. He goes for it again, I thought I'd go for soft boiled, and I assumed he has to be special. That's the only way that this could be it. And you know what he does next turn? He goes for frickin' Z wild charge, goodbye fun dude, GG. And you know, that, that wasn't good. I kinda was really salty about it, and I'm like, huh, really? Okay. That's alright. That's alright. I was really salty about it because I just was like, oh no. That's a really good mod that we just had lost because we couldn't do anything. But honestly, in the offensive sense, it wouldn't do much against any of these threats. But really losing Ty Val the Ty Val Coco doing that to us, I'm like, oh god, this is bad. So we go into Hell of a Guy. Yeah, we go into Jolteon. But, yeah, psych, we caught him in again Jutsu and went for Sludge Bomb. It was actually Zorark the entire time. Knocked him out. I was screaming. Super happy. Yes, finally, we might have a chance now. That's a big offensive threat out of the way. 
and then he goes straight into Tauros the next turn. I was scared because I was wondering if it was Scarfed or not. I switched out into Vaporeon to just take a hit. I could have done Dust Noir, but I was just too unsure. And yep, he did a bunch of damage. I was really just scared. I didn't know what he had. And so he went for the Wild Charge. And I'm over here like, yo, I'm about to die. I really thought I was going to take this death and be like, alright, let's just go straight into Dust Noir and F him up or something. And I had to think, was he Life Orbed? And apparently the set I was looking at when I was calking, he was Life Orbed. So I had to gun and think, well, he could high roll and kill me, or we live and just at least get Scald to burn him. That's all I want out of it. I didn't really ask for the burn, I just wanted to do damage. But the burn was nice icing on the cake, therefore, boom, if he even decides to switch out, he just dies. It's crazy. So, boom, we lose another Mon out of the process, but great work by Vaporeon. It burned a lot of good threats, therefore forcing him to make tough decisions to switch out or not. Should he switch out of this for death? Basically, if he goes into Nido King, it's just going to die. He's going to go in there, get burned on top of the 6% loss, and die out of it. So it worked in our favor. And we go back into Hell of a Guy, go on a run, just go for Dark Pulse, knock that out. And then he's going into Tornado's T, it's down to enough, and I know that Dark Pulse does around 45-53% to 53 against it, so we can just knock out everything. Boom, it dies. Goodbye, King. Then he puts in the GG, but it's definitely not over. Goes back into it again, like, oh, enough to kill. He switches back out and goes into Savali Ghost. And then we go for Dark Pulse again. Boom, kill. He's dead. He just keeps using Regenerator for, like, the next bunch of turns. And we make a lot of mistakes here because it thought it was over. Going to Heatram, I'm like, wait, he had HP ground just before. And, um, you know, didn't think that through. I was going to set up Sunny Day, and I fucked that up <laughs> by going into Dust Noir. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. And, uh, you know, just nothing you can really do about that. It's all right. I go for the burn because he seems that he's actually regenerated. Really noticed that a bit too late. It all kind of just works out. He goes for Nightshade, and it really doesn't matter. But it all really works out. It's really good. He goes right into Thorn Tornado's T. And uh, we just keep pressuring him to keep switching out over and over again and dying to whatever. And in the end, actually, let's back that up a turn. In the end, uh, he switches back out into Reuniclus. We luckily are like, oh, let's go for Nightshade again. Now it's like, is he faster or not? He, was he banking out of speed or he just stopping? Nah, we outsped him, thank God. And uh, we still had a chance here, 3%. Pretty much I was expecting the 3-0, but he kind of just goes for the Tailwind. I'm like, oh, okay. Goes for Nightshade and boom, he's out. GG's, 4-0 victory, great game. Uh, now we're still undefeated in all week one battles that I've ever participated in in this league. So that's crazy. So, it was a good game. Uh, Oak really kind of just tested me hard on here. It was a hard game. This is a hard test for week one. Week ones are always those games that pretty much matter hard or don't matter because you either want to get off on a great start, start with high confidence. And if it doesn't work that way, you're going to probably just be either going in a slump or it's only one game. So, really, week one kind of matters and doesn't matter depending on how you look at it. If you look at it in the pessimistic sense, it means a lot. If you lose, it might just mean, yeah, it's going to be a bad season. Or if you win, it's going to be a good season. And if you look at the optimistic view, if you win, it's great. If you lose, there's still 11 games to play. That's all there is to it. So, I'm just glad I got this win. I'm very happy. We got a nice, fresh redemption for this season. Uh, next week, we have one and the, I forgot what his team name was, the Frokies or something. I, I can't remember, but we'll probably do that next week after we do the analysis for the whole week one, week one. Um, so thanks for watching. If you're wondering about Battle of the Week, Napi and Luke are going to do that for me. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time for the next one. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more so I can be noticed. Bye-bye.